Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and assalamu alaikum students welcome to the online course of animal form and function I am your course instructor Salman Ahmed lecturer department of biology Kohat University of Science and Technology today I am recording my first lecture the topic is temperature regulation in vertebrates In this lecture, we will discuss about temperature regulation in vertebrates, the adaptations of fishes to different water temperatures, adaptation of amphibians and reptiles, and concept of thermoregulation in birds and mammals. This lecture will help the students in understanding how various physiological and physical adaptations help the vertebrates in surviving fluctuating environmental temperatures. First of all, temperature and body fluid regulations. I have added few slides from the uh, previous lectures the students attended at class in university just to uh, uh, link the gap between the previous lectures and the topic currently I am recording. So, first of all, the Earth's environment varies in terms of temperature and amount of water present, just like in polar regions and high mountain regions and deep oceans, temperature is nearly zero or less than zero throughout the year. Whereas in equatorial deserts, the temperature usually exceeds 40 degrees Celsius throughout the year. And between these two extremes, there is a temperate zone where the temperature fluctuates slightly. Varying amount of water and habitats, there are uh, a number of uh, habitats present on the earth on the base of the uh, varying amount of water available, just like freshwater habitats, salt water, wetlands, mountains, grassland, and desert habitats. Animals have successfully colonize these varied places by possessing homostatic mechanisms. Now homostasis and temperature regulation. Homostasis means maintaining relatively constant internal environment despite fluctuations in the external environment. The temperature of a living cell affects the rate of metabolic activity. An animal can grow faster and respond to the environment more rapidly and efficiently if its cells are kept warm. In fact, the zoologists are of the view that it is the homostasis and thermoregulation which is the major reason for their evolutionary success, for the evolutionary success of higher animals. Thermoregulation means the ability to control internal body temperature. A multitude of body systems are involved in thermoregulation and homostasis. These are nervous system, endocrine system, respiratory system, and circulatory system in higher animal. Now the impact of temperature or animal life. So how the temperature affects animal life, their physiological functions and the metabolic activities of animals are sensitive to changes in the internal temperature. The rate of cellular respiration and enzymes activity increases with the increase in temperature up to certain limit. This limit is known as temperature optima. The animals exchange heat by means of four physical mechanisms. These are conduction, convection, evaporation and radiation. Previously, I have uh, discussed these each of these topics in detail in the class. So uh, now no need of further discussions. We will move to the next slide. Temperature regulation in fishes. The temperature of surrounding water determines body temperature of most fishes as fishes are ectotherms. Uh, fish in extremely cold water have antifreeze material in their blood such as polyalcohols and water-soluble peptides and polypeptides. 
these compounds actually lower the freezing point of the blood plasma and other body fluids. Fishes also have proteins and protein sugar compounds that shun the growth of ice crystals formation uh, during 0 degree Celsius and below 0. These adaptations enable these fishes to stay flexible and uh, uh, live in, uh, uh, swim freely in the super cool state that is the freezing temperature of the water bodies. Now you can observe the uh, cross section of the fish body and the uh, different layers of the muscles uh, which have maintained uh, varying temperature, body temperature and the warmest uh, uh, tissue layer is the red tissues uh, in the core of the body which help in the swimming. Uh, some active fishes maintain a core body temperature significantly higher than the temperature of water as you can observe 31 degrees Celsius in the red muscles. In bluefin tuna and great white shark, the body uh, there is a, a system of the concurrent heat exchange present, uh, known as retimirable or miraculous net, in which the warm blood and veins transfer heat to the uh, colder blood in the arteries. This exchange of heat actually help in the uh, avoid uh, help in avoiding uh, heat loss in the fishes. The heat generated by red muscles is, is not lost, uh, and the um, uh, transferred in the red retimirable from venous blood passing outward to the cold arterial blood passing inward from the body surface. This arrangement of blood vessels enhances vigorous activity by keeping swimming muscles several degrees warmer than the tissue near the surface of the fish. Uh, this is a special adaptation of these species. Their muscular contractions can have four times as much power as those of similar fishes, uh, similar muscles in fish with colder bodies. Thus, they can swim faster and uh, uh, they can swim comparatively faster and range more widely through various depths, depths in uh, search of prey uh, as compared to uh, other predatory fishes. Temperature regulation in amphibians and reptiles. Amphibian and reptiles are uh, ectotherms mostly and they face marked daily and seasonal temperature changes in their environment. They have air rather than water as surrounding medium, unlike fishes. Uh, most amphibians have difficulty in controlling body heats because they produce little of it metabolically and uh, uh, quickly uh, lose most of uh, it from the body surface. However, behavioral adaptations enable both amphibians and reptiles to maintain their body temperature within a certain range. Amphibians have an additional thermoregulatory problem as well. They uh, respire cutaneously. Uh, and the exchange of gases O2 and CO2 uh, take place through their skin. The skin of these uh, uh, amphibians act as natural evaporating cooling system. So the problem of heat loss through evaporation limits the habitat and activities of amphibians to warm and moist areas. Some amphibians such as bullfrogs can vary the amount of mucus they secrete from their body surface which is a physiological response that helps regulate evaporative cooling. Now, reptiles have dry skin, unlike amphibians, which reduce the loss of body heat through evaporative cooling of the skin. They are completely ectothermic, warm themselves and they can warm themselves by behavioral adaptations. Reptiles also have expandable ribcage which allows more powerful and efficient ventilation and help in breathing. Uh, students, some of the most more sophisticated regulatory mechanisms found in mammals are actually first found in reptiles. Just like in sea turtles and sea snakes, they conserve their body heat 
by directing the blood through circulatory shunts into the body center. Similarly, the heat production which involves uh, endocrine system that is the production of thyroxine and epinephrine and their involvement in heat production is uh, actually was actually first found in uh, reptiles. In addition, tortoises and some turtles they cool their body through salivating, frothing at the mouth, urination on back legs, moistening the eyes and panting. Temperature regulation in birds and mammals. Most active and they are more the they are uh, the most active and behaviorally uh, complex vertebrates. They can live in almost all types of habitats on the earth. They are homothermic, endotherms. They can maintain body temperature between 35 degrees Celsius and 42 degrees Celsius with metabolic heat. Some species have highly vascularized pouch known as gular pouch. That can flutter, known as gular fluttering, to increase evaporation from the respiratory system. This gular pouch is exclusively found in some of uh, birds. The cooling mechanisms prevent excessive warming in blood in birds. There are no sweat glands, so the birds uh, 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 avoid the heat loss by panting, known as bird's pant. Uh, you can observe the terrestrial and aquatic birds and how they prevent heat loss. Feathers are excellent insulators, especially down type feathers that trap layer of air next to the body to reduce heat loss from the skin. Similarly, in some aquatic species, uh, the loss of heat is uh, uh, ensured by uh, uh, peripheral counter current heat exchange vessels called retimirable, just like the one found in the uh, fishes. They, uh, this time, the retimirable is found in the legs and feet of the birds to reduce heat loss. You can observe this diagram with two uh, pipe like structures. The, there is a uh, gray, uh, there is a uh, constant uh, transfer of heat from the arterial blood to the venous blood. Mammals living in colder regions like arctic frogs, barren ground caribou, they also have these exchange vessels uh, uh, just like those of the retimirable found in the fishes and birds in their extremities like legs, tails, ears and nose. As mentioned in the diagram, animals in hot climates such as jackrabbits, they have structures like large ears to get rid of the body, um, the, to get rid of the excessive heat in the body. Thick pelts and thick layer of insulating fat called rubber uh, is present just under the skin uh, in some marine animals. Uh, these are especially I'm talking about the mammals. These are seals and whales to maintain body temperature around 36 to 38 degrees Celsius. In some structure of these uh, marine mammals like their tail and flipper where no blubber is present, a counter current system of arteries and veins help to minimize heat loss. Birds and mammals also use behavioral mechanisms to maintain a constant body temperature. Though they are endotherm, but just like ectotherms, they sun themselves during the cold day or seek shade as the temperature fluctuates during the uh, sunny days. Many animals huddle to keep warm, others share burrows for protection from the temperature extremes. Similarly, uh, the phenomena of migration to warm climates and hibernation enable many different birds and mammals to survive harsh environmental temperatures. A walrus and endotherm, you can observe uh, the picture on your screen, uh, which is a mammal, uh, aquatic mammal, and a lizard and ectotherm, uh, which is present on the rock 
you can observe it on your screen these are the references Peter and Carl de book 6th edition and Campbell biology 10th edition uh, students can uh, found these books uh, on the link I have shared already uh, thank you so much for your watching uh, I will welcome any type of query and student can share their queries um, on the whatsapp group or the KCMS and for surely I will answer in the next lecture. Thank you so much.